Uh, but this match is Brian Maxine taking on Steve Wright. I love the show, Pete. I love, I love the show. show. <laughs> he, uh, Steve Wright here looks... I'm, he looks like a young policeman. He looks quite presentable. He does. Very surprising. Yeah. I've got to say it quietly. He looks almost handsome for this he era of wrestling. He does. And I tell you what, good genes. Because <laughs> Steve Wright's son would be in WCW in the early 90s. And he was called Das Wunderkind, oh. Alex Wright. And Alex Wright is probably the best looking wrestler there's ever been. <laughs> um, Steve Wright is from Warrington. They mentioned that he was the youngest wrestler to ever appear on World of Sport when he was 16. Mm. And this is uh, 1972, this match at Leicester de Montfort Hall. I think Steve Wright is 19 or 20 here. Right. I mean, 1920 in the 70s is very much 36 in 2023 <laughs> money, isn't it? This is also a funny thing where you see wrestling in 72. You could compare wrestling in 72 to the wrestling they were doing in Japan and the mm. wrestling they were doing in America. And this seems modern and fresh. Mm. And you can understand why a generation of British wrestlers were so hurt by everyone just talking about, oh, that old British crap, it was all fake. Mm. You watch something like this match. I mean, Steve Wright is the perfect opponent here. He would have a really wonderful career Steve Wright after a good you know babyface run in Britain he actually moved full time to Germany in 1974 where they also had a very very active wrestling scene and by 1975 he's wrestling in New Japan he had a really solid run. He had some singles losses to the main eventers, Antonio Inoki and Strong Kobayashi. He was beating big Japanese names at the times, like Haruka Aigen and Osamu Kido. In 1980, he's over in Stampede Wrestling in Canada. <laughs> he wins all of his matches. His final one is a time limit draw with the Dynamite Kid in 1980. <laughs> that is a match I looked to see if it exists. I can't find it anywhere. I think it might be one of the top two or three matches of all time. Um, <laughs> He would end his career in Germany, wrestling for the CWA, going to frequent time limit draws with Fit Finlay and with Chris Benoit. Wow. I mean, Steve Wright is one of those <laughs> hidden jewels that up until now, everyone's like, he's the dad of Das Wunderkind, Alex Wright. <laughs> and you see him in this match and you're like, I mean, you know, conservatively, probably one of the top six wrestlers of all time. <laughs> he's wrestled everyone. It's like when we had uh, Daniel Bryan and Kamala wrestling. It's like these generation hopping matches that you see. It really is. There is a direct link between wrestling Brian Goldbelt Maxine mm. and wrestling wrestling Chris Benoit. It's <laughs> just astonishing. The match itself starts, out comes a uh, gold belt, and he's wearing his crown and cape. And they're not cheap. No, no, they're not for that generation. No, no. I think that's a local theatre, <laughs> having a bit of a jumble sale. <laughs> they say, from Ellesmereport originally, now from London. Didn't need to that bit of information, did I we? No, but I also, I, they, the crowd, that's, that's to make them boo, isn't oh, it? Oh, right, yeah. I okay, reckon, yeah, yeah. you know, the people of Leicester, <laughs> you know. And I look at that, and I sort of heard that, and I was a bit like, oh, you know, I feel a bit discriminated against him. You know? <laughs> that there, London. Yeah, it was really mean. <laughs> he has a Harley race body, doesn't he? The tattoos set it off. But <laughs> yeah. Squint. Bus driver. Bus, it's the bus driver, <laughs> like Harley race bus driver sheet with the arm tattoos. And, you know, it's, it just squeals Harley. It does. He's doing a little bit of, he's got a sort of little thing he wants to do. He wants to shimmy his arms up yes. to get his crown off. It, they won't let him do it. They keep booing and he keeps stopping and starting again. And I was like, oh, you know, this feels a bit panto <laughs> but then you think in 72 this is show business yeah. this guy is Britain's gorgeous George mm. you know he is doing stuff that you've never seen before the hair Pete the comb over <laughs> it's his hair he has so much hair at the start yeah. and it just disappears very quickly it's very, very quickly, quickly John Cena's out of there yeah it just lifts up and goes over and it <laughs> hangs at the side of his head like a ghost's hand on a photograph <laughs> just haunted hair <laughs> and I was looking at his head with that bald little bit and he it's like a sort of talking onion from a kid's book. <laughs> he looks exactly like that. Like a witch has done a spell on an onion and it now thinks it's Sprouted, the king. Yeah. Comb overs <laughs> do get a lot of stick. But nobody, I, does, nobody does them anymore. They are. If you were a wrestler... And you can do a comb over. That is easy, constant heat. <laughs> Seeing that thing go flap. Um, but what an absolutely beautiful match. And nothing in it that you'd go, oh, that was the highlight. But every single part of it. Smooth. Oh, go with smooth. Just what? There's a bit where, like, to get out of a hole, he sort of crumbles on the floor. Yeah. But it's all kind of one motion. And then Wright does it. And, mm. and it's just like, this is actually quite good. Oh, <laughs> it's so good. When it starts, you get the impression that Brian Maxine doesn't really wrestle. Yeah. He's got it's an element of the about, honky yeah. tonk man about him <laughs> where he's got a belt and he's a bit of a cheat. Yeah. But you do wonder whether or not he's actually going to do it. But 
but quite early on, they're doing a technical exchange of arm bars mm. and arm ringers. And there's a bit where Wright just gets him and Maxine just twists and steps under. Mm. And I properly went, oh, lovely! <laughs> just like smooth water poetry. Beautiful. <laughs> um, I got the impression watching this that Maxine is one of those guys who is a fantastic bass. Mm. He is not going to do, as a heel, anything too flashy. He's not going to show he's technical. He's just going to look like he's a rough, tough dude. Mm. The other guy gets to do all of this wonderful stuff that you go, he's a superior wrestler. But you know what? Brian Maxine's always in the right place. Mm. He's always giving the arm. He's always allowed... I watched him and I thought, I think you're one of those wrestlers that is so good that you don't really do anything mm. because all the things you're doing, I don't even notice. I, th- I thought it was magic. Mm. He had a stranglehold that he did as well, where he'd jiggle it up and down. <laughs> and they reacted to that like it was a Canadian Murder. destroyer. They were just like, this is the most astonishing thing I've ever seen. Down out of it very nicely. And the bridge. Cross scissors. And Maxi doesn't want to risk that. Steps out. <laughs> the audience in this, Pete. Oh, the audience. The men in the front row in their suits and ties. Yeah. Their wives who have come out like it's to a dinner dance. <laughs> they are, all of them, not a day under 70. <laughs> and they, as this match goes on, are banging on the ring apron, standing up. The old men are lifting their arms above their heads <laughs> in fury. He does a lot of knuckles in the back, Brian Maxey. Yes, he? he does. He's little, not, he's not a gentleman. Tweaks. Little not, tweaks. Not a gentleman like your gentleman wrestlers. <laughs> what he is, he's a bit of a street brawler, isn't he? There's a bit where he just pushes right into the ropes and they are like, that is illegal. And I was a bit like, that didn't look worth getting upset about. <laughs> he gives Wright a lot as well and Wright will come back with a forearm. Mm. And a couple of times, you do notice Brian Maxine, you go, the thing you like doing is you like being thrown onto your back. <laughs> and every time he goes onto his back, it's spectacular. <laughs> it looks like he's been shot. <laughs> Round four starts, they are throwing the ripped up pictures that he's given out on his way back in the ring. It's just money, isn't it? It's all money. Abs- Good stuff. This is a crowd who've got the needle. They have got <laughs> the needle with that big-headed Brian Maxine. <laughs> and it's just amazing that he did this for so many decades, yeah. just going to different cities and winding up the population <laughs> before leaving. Um, first of all, does go to Steve Wright, and he does a little sort of ballet pose. <laughs> and then halfway through the match, we get the fact it's been taped off the wrestling channel. Oh, uh, I love all of the So many I love ads all for personal of the adverts. I love it. Lombard um, Direct. <laughs> On 0800 215,000. That Lombard Direct was good. Uh, Screwfix. Uh, yeah. There's a man in the Screwfix advert. I think ordering stuff online is quite new. <laughs> okay. And the Sparky on site has bought himself a box of electrical sockets. Mm. And he only ordered them last night at five to six. And that's the big thing, right? He's got a big box of electrical outlets. Mm. Now, if you've not prepped for the job in hand and you were ordering them for the next day... Bad Sparky. Yes. Why should we celebrate in this bad Sparky? Yeah, I totally agree. And also, what were you doing that you couldn't just drive past? Right? <laughs> yeah. You nip You've in. probably got a van, yeah. Nip in. Get your fucking electrical sockets. Oh, f- finished look- looking at this Thai porn. <laughs> Why is he not? <laughs> <laughs> Why have the Sparky not got electrical sockets in his van? Don't have none. I don't, don't have, have none. none. I run I out of all them. of them at the same time. <laughs> I steal them <laughs> from sites. Uh, there's an for the Wrestling Channel theme that you can get on your phone. There is. is. Did you see how much it would cost you to get Move of the Week down to your Nokia? Oh, no, I didn't see. Four pounds. Fucking hell. They would hit we you think, for four we pounds. We think Cosy Living's rough nowadays. It is funny how people used to be like, you know, <laughs> I don't mind paying like four pounds to have the crazy frog ringtone. <laughs> yeah. And now you do six years of a wrestling podcast. And when you say, <laughs> we've got a Patreon, people on YouTube go, I hope you fucking die in a fire. <laughs> um, I hope I do too. <laughs> Hello, I'm Pete from WrestleMe. Hello, I'm Mark from WrestleMe. That was a nice salute. Uh, we are can be found over on our Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash WrestleMe. Uh, you get weekly podcasts, a monthly fantastic newsletter that's absolutely gigantic. It's ginormous. You get weekly podcasts advert free and you also get these videos advert free. It's patreon.com forward slash wrestle me. We've done loads of stuff there. So go and look at it. There's loads.
we come back after for round five. There is a classic bit that what you've got here is you've got Steve Wright totally outclassing Brian Maxine, mm. and he is doing all the work. And this is a non-title match, but Maxine, people are hoping he'll get put in his place because he's a big head. Yeah, and Steve Wright, <laughs> with it being a non-title and doing as well as he is, it looks like everything's going really, really well. Mm. Um, Maxine very quickly has got two public warnings as well. Right. So he's down one fall. He's got two public warnings. He's in all kinds of trouble. He, it couldn't be worse for him. Uh, uh, in round six, Steve Wright does a drop kick. <laughs> One of the few people, I think, who was pulling off decent drop kicks in 1972 in Britain. Mm. And he hurts his leg. And that seems to be one of those things that you can do back then because you were like, in fairness, that was the most spectacular thing I've ever seen a human do. Mm. Of course you would hurt your leg going down. Mm. I think if you tried that now, people would just go, oh, this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. um, and Maxine <laughs> does one of the only beautiful wrestling moves the entire thing as it happens. As Steve Wright is limping, he just swoops in, falls to the floor and carries on spinning. And gets him into a leg lock mm. and Wright is forced to retire. And what they do then is they just look at it and they just go, do you know what? He can't stand. So unfortunately, <laughs> the bout can't continue. And Brian Goldbelt Maxine is the winner. It's a weird end, I, think, I thought. Yeah. Well, what you've got here is Goldbelt Maxine being lucky. And he didn't really deserve to win. Yeah. But it enhances he was, his whole kind of like big head lucky guy. It does. And stuff. somehow, you know, it's that big thing about, I think the honky tonk man used to say this, it's better to be lucky than good. Mm. And with Brian Maxine, he's good enough, but he's also lucky. lucky yeah. And a lucky big head is the single most <laughs> annoying thing for all those people who are working, you know, in a firm that makes, I don't know, goldfish tanks yeah. and they've been doing that for 60 years <laughs> and they see him easing through life with his gold <laughs> belt winning at the last possible moment um, he gets his crown and cape straight back on no hanging about he knows what the brand is and he offers Steve Wright a signed photo. Just <laughs> perfection. Um, he chucks the rest yeah, out yeah. into the crowd and they come back torn up the winner I don't think I'd seen much Brian Maxine before this match at all. I'd mm. certainly never seen Steve Wright in action. And I was blown away by the idea, really, I suppose, that there, I'm, I am used to it, but it does take me by surprise. The depth of ability in the British scene from top to bottom mm. is just unbelievable. Mm. These guys who are out there performing every night for year after year after year, and they are just working with some of the most creative wrestlers in history. And every single person in 1972 who was good enough to be in a wrestling ring and have it on TV is basically working at a level that you just cannot believe. Mm. Um, now, one question, Peter. Right. What happened, do we think, to the customised belt that Brian Maxine wore when his real one was stolen? Oh, I don't know. Chopped it up and sold it uh, in trading cards? The answer is we don't know. Right. Uh, what I do know is that it did come up for auction just last week. Whoa. And there was absolutely no bids on it. Right. No one bid on it. Uh. Until I came oh, along. What? What's this? So, Mark, hang on. You, you've, you've. I haven't even opened this. You Pete, haven't even opened this because I be thought sure. we'd do this oh, ceremonially. Oh my god! Now this I'm gonna, amazing. I'm going to tell you, Pete. I have spent a lot of time trying to find the belt that this seems to have come off. <laughs> but let's make it clear: this is very much an original part. Of Brian Goldbelt Maxine's uh, proper proper title. belt, right? Okay, and I'll tell you how we know that it's because Brian Maxine wasn't shy about making his name appear on things. <laughs> Here we go. Where did you find this? Is this on a weird wrestlers auction site? No, this was on eBay. And right. it wasn't particularly well listed, right? And it relied on the fact that I knew this show was coming up, so I thought, what out there is there? Can you get? <laughs> From Brian Maxine. Oh, my God. And the oh answer God. is his original belt. It's beautiful. Gold belt Maxine, king of the ring, world champion. So hang on. So that sat around that man who grabbed that bit of Debbie Harry and taught her how to wrestle. If Debbie Harry has touched this, 
I am never taking it off. <laughs> it's amazing. Isn't that cool? It's so good, man. Isn't that good? Look at the rivets. The little rivets at the back. The What's rivets. it made of? Like some kind of like plaster or something? It's, it's like a... They, they were unsure. <laughs> they said it was a mix of fiberglass and brass. Right, yeah. I mean, that's that's very much, you know, well, the fiberglass, that's brand new. <laughs> but, Space age, that. I, I can get access to brass. <laughs> and I bet he can. The brass is the, 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 the rivets at the back. Isn't that Definitely. a thing of beauty? It looks like something, like a really good... It looks like something you see in the back of a pub. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh, I, I, be careful it doesn't smash. Yeah, well, look, if, if it smashes, it's eBay. I'll just say to arrive damage. <laughs> Get all your money back. God knows it's happened to me enough. Um, but that, that to me, is like... That is a jewel in the crown for me. Beautiful. And I, I'm just... All I'm going to say is if Goldbelt Maxine does get to hear about this. I mean, you'd probably think he's going to say I can have it back. No. Um, but, 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 but you're more than welcome to send me a photo where you're wearing it because I sure as hell can't find one. <laughs> that is a, a thriller for me. Yeah. I am over the moon. And I, look, I'm happy to just pick out one more piece from ending up in a big bin because this country does not appreciate its wrestling heritage. <laughs> we but, do. Exactly. And... Uh, I'm going to take this along to our live show as well, and I'm going it. to I I am going to let anyone who'd like to Touch hold it. it up, yes, and pay tribute to, <laughs> to the gold. last surviving oh, golden era world of sport wrestler Brian Goldbelt Maxine. Oh, Mark, I, and it I will feel a bit it, emotional. It will be fifteen pounds a shot because. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said how much it cost, but it cost me a lot oh, of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. Lot of money. Lot of money. Yeah. So 